Greetings and welcome to the bench for a fresh new build. Uh, another group build even. And I've shown you guys this before in some update videos. Uh, building this for a group build called the Toothless Fuckers. Uh, that's fuckers with an O, not an U-C-K kind of thing. Uh, <coughs> for uh, the Facebook group, Fucker the Rivet Counters from... Uh, from uh, Headed by Harry Houdini and Basque the Cat. Uh, criteria uh, it has to have no guns, no ammunition, or anything of the sort, so, i.e., toothless. So, I decided on I'm gonna build this little uh, 132nd scale Revell Corvette C3. It's only 20 parts, so, this is mainly going to be a paint exercise for me because I do plan on giving this thing a wacky paint job. Or not so wacky, it's probably been done to death. So anyways, uh, what's in the box? You got instructions, hardly needed for the 20 obvious parts. There are only things that I can't tell where, where I'm supposed to put are these things. But I think though these are going to be side exhaust pipes or something. But then again, I'm proving wrong right here. These are, these are the axles, apparently. Uh, looks like a snap fit kit. It is uh, that simple. That simple build. Still, 10 steps here in the instructions. And then we have the decal placement thing right here. Uh, yeah, let's look at the plastic. It's, it's a really old kit. It is... What was it again? 1987 copyrighted, so there's plenty of flash going on there. But it is a neat little car, nonetheless. It has really sharp lines here. And there are some mold lines that need to be taken care of. And we have got some silver parts, which are the bumpers and the wheels and the steering wheel. Um, it's molded in 1967 license plates. So. I'm gonna have to sand that away, sand that away, and some clear parts. Uh, gonna keep those in the back till the last minute. And we got one sprue with parts on it. It's got the chassis with everything molded in. Um, the interior top, some seats with no backs to them. It's all white, so it's not very good to show on camera. But there's nothing in here. Uh, there's probably gonna have to take care of that and the axle pieces and the dashboard and then we have some actual rubble, rubber tires my tongue is twisting in my mouth rubber tires with some uh, basic straight tractor threads and uh, the decal sheet with everything in decals the lights and the back are Deckles and all the chrome is deckles except for the main bumpers of course. I don't think I'm gonna be using the rocker panels. I keep forgetting to google what this is called but rocker panels for lack of a better word. I don't even know what rocker panels are. I think these are that. Uh, I got a few license plate on the decal sheet here and uh, loads of interior stuff like all the gauges and the radios and and whatnot, and also white rings for the tires, because we don't want no black walls, they just blend into the pavement, as Luigi would say. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on prepping the body for paint, because it's gonna get about three colors of paint, I think, and then some chrome as well, or metalizer paint. So we'll see how this goes. Gonna try some stuff on it. Just gonna have focus on having fun with it. But yeah. Gonna go ahead and start prepping it. I already said that. Yeah, so I got the got the body all cleaned up and ready for paint. Uh it's all white, so it's not the best color to show on camera, I guess. And uh cut out all the other parts and just having to play around with them, uh test fitting and stuff. And this is very much a snap kind of model with some big ass holes here where the interior snaps to the to the chassis part. And um, I also filled in the back 
half of the seats uh, with some putty and I have yet to sand out a little bit more I also filled in some sink marks on the rear bumper and I've tried my best to scratch out the 1969 license plates both in the front and the back uh, and it's now time for me to start painting the body and then I'm gonna finish off uh, sanding the seats down and get all the interior painted as well <clears throat> and uh, I think I'm going for a reddish interior maybe a two-tone with some uh, Ferrari red and Ferrari red which is a kind of a different kind of red than just red and I was thinking maybe doing the carpets in the in the German red brown Panzer color. Get in focus, please. Yep, this camera has stopped focusing. So yeah, that's the plan. That's the, that's my game plan. Give this a base coat, base coat of uh, white, and I'm not expecting the white color to play along with me. So it's. I'm, I'm prepared for trouble so to speak and uh, then we gotta do a hell of a lot of masking I got some metallic signal red and metallic arctic blue so red white and blue as an indication of what where this paint job is going I also picked up some uh, glitter stars uh, these are just stickers um, so yeah if you haven't guessed it by now, we're doing Stars and Stripes, the American flag paint job on this car. I know it's been done to death, uh, but I want to do it on my li little model Corvette as well. I think it's going to look pretty cool. So yeah, I'm just going to go plow ahead and start painting some stuff up. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> the interior is all painted up and finished and I put a decals in there as well and uh, it's horrible looking, <laughs> really. Uh, excuse my bad lighting, I had to blend the wife the other light, but um, yeah, it's not much to look at anyways. Got the two-tone red interior there. The huge steering wheel, which is, I think, is about the same size as the wheels. Um, does not fit there at all. But other than that, it's, it is what it is, and we'll make do with it. I'm also working on the underside here. Got the, just painted it black. And I'm working on painting the exhaust and the transmission and engine. Which is mostly just going to be red. I'm going to paint the the mufflers red, uh, like a cherry bomb or something. Uh, that's not really important though. What it, what is important is that I have painted all the bumpers and wheels with uh, black, cause I am going to experiment with uh, this broken airbrush that I have. It has a broken nozzle there. So, I don't mind if I F it up, and I'm going to go ahead and try and pour a little bit of this stuff in there and try and chrome the bumper and wheels, bumpers and wheels, with some liquid chrome, just to see if I, if I can really. And this being a broken airbrush that was just sitting in my drawer waiting to be thrown out, um, it doesn't really matter if it wrecks it because I don't really have the right materials to clean up the oil based paint in this stuff I think but we'll see how things turn out and if this works out uh, really well and I will manage to clean the airbrush up and stuff 
I got a couple more projects that I want to do in liquid chrome. Uh, one of them being a P51. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is without a doubt one of the hardest masking jobs that I've ever done. Getting the bendy tape to work around the various curves of the Corvette body. And I'm trying to keep the, the spaces even. And I do that by having this piece of tape. And I lay that down along the body like so. You get the idea. And then I put another strip of tape besides that. Pull that off and you got the stripe that's going to be painted red. So not very exciting thing to watch. But it will look darn cool when it's finished I think. And I'm expecting a lot of bleeding to be going on there. But hoping for the best. Yep, here she is all painted up in the metallic colors. Uh, the white is a solid white, not a metallic, but just look at that shine in those metallic colors, man. Looks like a metallic handy cane on the back. Uh, turned out way better than I had hoped, had even ever dreamed of hoping. A uh, little bleeding back here. Well, it's whiting out, but there's a little bleeding on the back here, as well as in here, and some on the back, of course, and here. That's all the bleeding. That's all the ble bleeding that we got. I totally forgot to turn it off my video here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm getting the sniffles as well. Yeah, just it looks so darn cool. Even if I say so myself, I know I'm being an ass, just admiring my own work here, but man, I'm just so happy with how this turned out. I'm super stoked about stoked about this. Bro, so stoked, bro. But yeah. I'm not so sure on the rear end though. Uh, focus, goddammit. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look that good in those stripes, so I'm thinking about uh, masking off along with the spoiler there and uh, and yeah, painting painting the rear end in some different color color. But first, I gotta address the the little bleeding that we got on the rear deck there. Um, just gonna put put my pen ugh, brush and paint in there I think but I think I'm gonna have to spray over this to get the smooth finish as well as the little tiny amount of bleeding that's in there that you can't see because it's whiting out but man these metallic colors were the right choice I think for this application so Almost three minutes just admiring my, my beautiful American flag here. Wavering in the wind. Went with a uh, different sized stars there because I saw a picture online of a car that had done that and it looked quite cool. So I'm quite happy with doing that on mine. But I'm gonna give that a quick touch up and um, try to figure something out with the rear there and uh, give it a gloss coat. I'm going to let it stand for a couple of days. In the meantime, I think I might even take up uh, something else. And uh, I'm going to quickly go around and get the chrome and have a look at that. That's been that's been uh, standing for a couple of days now. Yep, Molotov liquid chrome to save the day once again. Uh, this is hell of a lot better than the. And the gray plastic it used to look like this just gray polystyrene but Molotov liquid chrome I freaking love that product 
And if you haven't gotten yourself some of this already, I highly recommend you that you do. Uh, I tried spraying it on, didn't quite work out so well with my broken airbrush. Of course, it's a broken airbrush, but ended up just uh, taking the pen and quite frankly just painting it on with a pen and uh, wherever the pen didn't reach I just pulled out my little brush and uh, brushed it in there and went quite heavily thick on it and got this lovely chrome finish so yeah this is this is turning out quite a car I guess yeah, as you can see, I'm working with gloves now, because the, the clear coat of this car has hardened and is quite nice looking. And I've started the assembly. I was just fiddling around with it at first, but then it started to click together so nice that I'm not pulling it apart again. And uh, I had to adjust the right height on the front a little bit. And it was quite simply just pressing the chassis plate more in there to get it to sit lower and glue it like that into place. So she's starting to look quite finished now. There's a few details that are still left to be done. I've uh, got to paint the side markers here. Got to add a little black in the louvers. Or louvers. <laughs> Whatever you call this, the shark. Uh, gills or whatever and I also need to <clears throat> paint these big areas here black Got a little license plate on there as well yep she is almost finished we're almost there next time I'll turn on the camera we'll have her all buttoned up and done and looking nice well <clears throat> May not look like I've done anything, but I've pinned in the side markers, I've pinned in the black. You can see it better on this side. And basically all that is left is to install these uh, chrome bumpers in the front and in the back and uh, she's done I guess. So no other way around it than just to go ahead and put those on I guess and uh, should snap into place I've done this before I test fitted it so yeah it's not the greatest model in the world as you can see it leaves some gaps in there and yeah the bottom I could have painted the inside but I didn't and quite frankly I don't think it matters all that much for this build it's it's mostly just a paint exercise even though I'm still entering it into a a group build <coughs> but it's been a fun little build so far I mean this silly little old-school click fit kit from Revell only 20 parts come on <laughs> so that doesn't fit that good maybe because there's a lot of crap in the holes but anyways there she is the 1969 Corvette Stingray in the American flag colors looking shiny as a, as a uh, candy cane yeah that's it <laughs> Not, nothing else to say about that uh, it was a fun little build like I said uh, it doesn't have to take so a long time it could be a fun afternoon for anyone uh, great for beginners whatever there's quite a bit of flashing to clean up and if you don't mind having 
not the best looking uh, display model when you're finished with there are some gaps and you can obviously tell from above uh, that this is not yeah uh, I don't know a newest newer kit <laughs> you can you can see where the snaps are in the in the windows and stuff but yeah for a, if you have an afternoon to to spend building a model I would recommend buying one of these 20 parts Revel 130 second scale kits it was quite fun and uh, I'll leave you guys with a slideshow of the entire build of the, uh, of the, of the finished build <clears throat> and I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did I'll catch you on the next one keep on modeling keep having fun ah.